All right, I'm back. <laughs> I just made the last video, but I want to, to introduce you to the Wanapum Tribe Museum that is um, but on the highway between Richland, Washington and George, Washington. And it's closer to George than it is to Richland. But uh, my cousin Jane and I were checking out assisted living facilities. It's like a retirement step down. Super cool. I'll put a link in the messages below if you ever need a place in the Tri-Cities. Very inexpensive and very nice for retirement in, in the scheme of retirement homes. But um, we went and checked that out and I did not take video of that. That would be inappropriate because I was trying to find a place for my cousin. But we had a really good time. We um, hung out with my one of my cousins, Norman, who... Um, is living the best retirement. I am telling you what, maybe someday I'll interview him because man, that guy knows how to be retired. He does. He is just like filling his days with stuff. And it's very interesting, very creative stuff. Like he fixes up cars, he does upholstery, he built himself a swimming pool, he built a sauna, he updated his 1920 house, he's training a new puppy, he does, he has a greenhouse and does a big garden. So very impressive. And we had a good time. But maybe someday I'll interview him. We'll see. He used to be, in his previous working days, he was a nuclear engineer, as I understand it. But I would have to ask him for sure, because that's all hearsay. But the museum, back to the museum. Um, the scenery between those two towns is lovely. High desert. Um, and But then you've got the river, uh, the Columbia River, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's the Columbia River. As it comes into Richland, I will reaffirm that when I look at a map, but I'm pretty sure it's the Columbia River. Um, I used to go back and forth there a lot when I lived both in Ritzville and in Seattle, because that would be the way to the Tri-Cities. It is beautiful, and the museum is one of the best tribal museums I've been to in a very, very long time, if ever, because it, um, it took a good stance between, it, it really addressed being a tribal member today and all that comes with that, living in both worlds, living, having a cultural heritage that you need to honor and pay attention to, but also being a modern dweller that has to deal with issues in the everyday. But then also having to deal with the fact that um, a lot of the time, some of the ways that you have to live are of no, no choosing of your own. So um, really cool museum. I highly recommend it. I will... Um, I'll probably close this out before we're done and comment some more on what you get to see.
Yep. And then it sounds from the video, there are ponds up in those breaks. Mm -hmm. Oh, drying fish, the fish rack. Mm -hmm. Hi, that's me again from my warm, cozy room. Uh, I just wanted to wrap up this video. Um, what was really good about the museum, um, like I said at the begin in the intro, was the point of view of double-edged sword and living as a modern tribal member and living as an old tribal member. But what was also impressive, and I remind what was reminded me of that when we um, when I rewatched this footage to put this together, was that the whole time we were walking through the museum, you heard voices of the people who were impacted by both the Wanapum Dam, which is a hydroelectric dam put along the Columbia River right in this ancestral land, but also Hanford. So the tribe was impacted by two, two um, imposing modern um, inventions, I guess, and that had a great impact on tribal life and how they, how they lived and it had an impact on their cultural heritage sites and how they gathered food. On the other hand though, is there was change in the tribe and it isn't all negative that it, it was really cool, especially at the beginning where they had moccasins from baby to adulthood that you walked and you sort of walked the path of what it was like to be a Wanapum member throughout this period. So the, the theme, thematic nature of the museum was really spiffy. Now, what you may be wondering what this is right here. And at the entrance to the museum and exit to the museum is Coyote, or Coyote, who is the traditional, um, all the Northwest tribes consider him to be the trickster. And he, he is, he plays a comedic role, but also um, tricks some of the some of the participants in the folk tales. So um, it was really cool that they had a mock-up of Coyote in the museum. And also that if you look down at his feet, he's wearing a pair of high tops or a, a high top tennis shoe and a moccasin, which sort of introduces you to the idea of the museum or the theme of the museum, which is living in both worlds. Um, there was another exhibit that is the temporary exhibit and it's about the impact of Hanford it was very artistically done, but also along this theme of the impact of Hanford on the people who who lived in this in this region, this big valley along the river in, near George. And um, one of the things that was interesting is, you know, there was a lot of bad things that to come out of Hanford, and there were some good things to come out of Hanford. And one of the interviews that was projected in the room was that. Um, somebody said something about the best thing that could have happened was Hanford because there were all sorts of tribal artifacts and, and, um, sacred sites that remain intact because it's a super fun site and it just sits. There's no development and development would have had a greater impact on the history of the tribe or these, these, um, sacred areas than Hanford did. Now, you know, again, this gray area. It's becoming a theme of my late fifties, looking at things in, in the view of gray, because there are good things and bad things about everything that happens in life. And this museum really, really addressed that. Anyway, highly recommend it. Um, if you can, if, uh, coming from the Seattle area, you would go over Snoqualmie Pass through Ellensburg, um, beyond Ellensburg to George and then turn right and head towards Richland. Uh, coming from the Portland area, um, I would go up Highway 84 probably and then into the Tri-Cities and back, but I don't know what MapQuest would do. We were, um, my cousin lives near Tacoma, so I drove up, picked her up, and then we went over to, through Ellensburg and Snoqualmie Pass to get to the Tri-Cities for our weekend, and then we came back via George mostly because it's no more mileage or not much more mileage. And, um, Jane, Jane's dad worked for Bonneville power, which I gather originally, or has a lot of dam sites out there. And so she used to go on the weekends when he had to do work out with him towards Bonneville power. And then sometimes he went into Hanford without her. She didn't get to go. 
But, oh, I'm tired because it's night time. Um, anyway, she was happy to go that way, so it was easy. It was, you know, no problem. And I'm really glad I went because I have driven by that museum before and never stopped. The other thing, the, the other good reason there is to go that way is the scenery. Um, I put a picture up at the very beginning that is the view out, out from the museum. But that whole valley up in there along the river is gorgeous. Gorgeous, high desert, beautiful to look at. So it's a beautiful drive. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell if you haven't already. Um, and if you have any questions about it, um, about this museum or how to get there or anything like that, let me know. Definitely recommend. See you in a couple days. Bye.